the double, double dopper, double doppler. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Double, double feature, double feature. I can't talk. Hey, Vickers Fave, and welcome to day six of the 12 days of Bookmas. <laughs> around here. My name is Rainy. I read all types of books. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe to my channel down below. It really helps my channel grow. Today's video is going to be some winter book wrecks. We are right in the thick of winter and so I figured that would be a really great time to share some of my favorite books that I think are perfect for like the perfect winter setting. They typically take place in winter. They might be snowy, icy, Christmassy, all that sort of stuff. I did do a summer book recommendations. I accidentally skipped fall so I will make sure to make its way back around for that. But let's talk about some wintry books, shall we? I have 10 books to share with you today. I have four thrillers, five romances, and one other, I guess you'd call it like literary fiction. I'm not entirely sure where it goes into, but we'll just see where we get. Okay, so these are all books that I've read that are tried and true that I enjoyed three star or above. Okay, because I'm not going to give you the bad books. I'm not going to give you books that I think sucked and hope that you like them. Okay, we're not about that here on this channel. We keep it real, we keep it fresh. All right, so let's talk about the thriller section first. And one of the first books that I want to recommend to you is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. And I give this five stars. I read this very early in the beginning of 2022. And I loved it. And I'm gonna try my best to remember the summary. But basically, it is about this woman that is in an extremely abusive relationship with her husband and they live in like this or they're on vacation either they're on vacation or they live in this isolated like cabin in the woods and it's snowy out and she's trying to make her escape but then she finds out that like there's some monster or creature lurking out in like the shadows of the woods or something and it's like killing people and so she's like trying to escape her abusive husband but also trying to escape this like weird creature so it's like a creature feature horror and it is so good. I just loved this book. I loved the whole ambiguity of the monster never quite knowing what it was and just like all this stuff. It was just so good. I just it was a great time. So if you like a good creature feature horror then this is the book for you. The next one is going to be a little bit of like a hot topic I would say because you either love this book or you hate this book. I loved this book. My mom did not like this book. I just loved it. And that is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Beanie. Uh, the reason that I think this worked for me is because it was in the beginning of my thriller reading journey. Would it have shocked me now? Honestly, it probably still would have because I just think it was that good. But anyway, this follows a husband and wife who are basically going through the thick of it. And so in order to salvage their marriage, I think the wife books them a vacation at an isolated cabin in like the woods in the snowy mountains. And they have written letters every year. I think she's written letters every year or he has to the other since their marriage has started. And you're finding out secrets about that while you're also in the current time. And like the husband has face blindness, which is where you can't recognize faces of people, which I didn't know was a real thing but I've now I've read that in like three different books which is quite intriguing to me but this book has a couple of main plot twists that happen and you are either here for them or you're not and for me I was shooketh to my core I'm a girly pup who was shooketh okay so like I had to appreciate it for what it did and I was just mystified when these things happened apparently you could spot some of these from a mile away but I just don't know about that okay so I was living I was loving I was thriving I was having my best life and so I hope that you also live your best life I've also just learned I am an Alice Feeney stan honestly because I really like the stuff that I've read from her that she writes. And in that same vein that is why I'm recommending to you a second Alice Feeney for winter and that is Daisy Darker because it takes place on New Year's Eve okay. It takes place on this secluded island. Do you get the vibe? Everything is isolated. Everything's secluded. It's a vibe. And this one takes place about a family that is a little chaotic but I mean then again whose family <laughs> isn't chaotic. There's a girl named Daisy and her nana and everybody else. And basically they go to the Nana's secluded ca cabin in the middle of this island on New Year's Eve and at midnight the lights go off, the lights come back on, Nana is dead, like dead as a doornail dead. And so they gotta find out which of the family members did it. And then of course it's like a, and then there was none situation where like more of them keep dying and you're just trying to find out what happens. And when I tell you that I was not prepared for this ending, I did not expect it. I should have seen it with all the context clues that Miss Feeney was feeding us. She was feeding us crumbs y'all and I was just I was missing. Like Hazel and Gretel, I just could not pay attention. And it was just so good. I I keep saying that I really enjoyed all these books, but I did. That's why I'm recommending them to you. I even enjoyed it more when I went back and like reread after I found out what the main plot twist was. And I appreciate it like so much more. Now, I do understand this plot twist is not going to work for everyone. 
So if you get to it and you're kind of like pissed by it, I understand. But I think that this is a really great one for people that are trying to get their way, they, they're dip their toe into the thriller world, okay? They're not quite sure. I think this is a good starter thriller for you. And then the last one, which was, I gave it three stars because I didn't love it nearly as much as the guest list, but it was still really good, is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I read this when I was doing my And Then There Were None retellings vlog for Agatha Christie. And this one is perfectly fine. It's like your typical isolated <laughs> cabin situation where a bunch of people who have been friends over the years unite for like a 10-year reunion or something, and then somebody dies, and then more people die, and then, you know, more and more and more. And it was fine. I mean... I didn't really care for some of the perspectives. There was one perspective that I didn't understand why we were getting it and I don't think I ever really figured out why we were getting it and I just wasn't invested in the characters and a lot of them are like rich hoity-toity like drama socialites which typically I'm all about but I just wasn't about for some reason for this book. I don't really know. It was just in the middle of the road for me. However, I really like Lucy Foley and I like the way that she writes which is why I'm still recommending it because I did enjoy my time. It just wasn't like a wow this is the best book I've ever read. But this is also a really good book to start with if you've never really dipped your toe into thrillers. But overall it was a good time. Okay now we're going to dip into romances and basically all but one is Christmassy because when I think of winter and I think of romances I think of Christmas romances and I have not read that many but the ones that I've read I really enjoyed like In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I'm pretty sure I gave this four maybe four and a half stars. This one is a Groundhog's Day type situation where our main girly pop basically is going to her family's cabin for the last time because they are selling it or something and on her way there she's basically like questioning her life choices and decisions and what would have happened if she had made a different choice. I think about like the person that she likes or something and basically she keeps repeating the same day over and over and over again until she gets it right. Okay? Okay. And there's a romance along the way. It was very cute. I had a lot of fun with it. It gave me a lot of great Christmassy vibes. So I do really recommend it. I haven't liked a lot that I've read from Christina Lauren after that, but her winter one or their winter one really slapped. We have Love Light Farms by BK Borison. And I will go into this saying this is not a Christmas romance. This is a winter romance because I'm pretty sure we don't even get to Christmas. Or if we get to Christmas, it is in the epilogue. Okay. So like it is being poorly mis mass marketed. We celebrate Thanksgiving more than we celebrate Christmas. Okay, also the fan just came on. So like, just go with it. But anyway, this one follows our main girl and guy and they are best friends. And she owns this Christmas tree farm that is basically dead on its way out. And she's trying to salvage it. And so she ends up competing in this Instagram competition where like this main girl will come out and like check out their farm and if they win they'll get a lot of money a lot of publicity it'll help put them back on the map but in order to do that I think she has to be in a relationship and so she lies and says that she's dating her best friend and so it's like best friends fake dating and of course they've been secretly in love with each other the whole time and so like there's a couple of issues I had with it I gave it five stars but if I was to reread it again now it probably would be a four stars but I had a really really great time with this book it's super cute I love the way that she writes her books and and I'm really excited to move on to book number two. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So this is one that I definitely recommend though. The next one is one that I really enjoyed. Like it is all vibes. It is nothing of like great stature. It is not like a masterpiece, but it's a vibe. Okay. It's a vibe. And that is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. I read that two years ago and I just loved it. It is about two sisters who both do baking in some sort. I believe one's on like a baking competition show or baking reality show. The other one just like helps their parents run their bakery shop but basically they like they switch lives it's like a parent trap situation they switch lives okay and then they end up falling in love with people from that side of the tracks okay but it is so good when I tell you it is just fun it brings out the Christmas vibes it brings out the baking vibes it brings out all of the holiday magic and love that you want in a rom-com this is the book for you okay in fact it is probably the one I would recommend the most out of all of these and so I just love it I just I just I'm here for it okay Go read this book. Fill yourself with Christmas joy. The next one is the only book that I actually could locate and so I will hold it up. And now that I think about it, I don't think it takes place around Christmas or winter time. However, someone said that the other day that it gave them the wintry vibes because of the cover and I just couldn't get that out of my mind. And so, um, we're just gonna go with it. And that is Indigo Ridge, the first book in the Edens series by Devney Perry. Uh, this is a book about Miss Winslow and it takes place in this little town called Quincy in Montana. She is a new chief of police and basically she has to earn favor with the Edens which is like this very popular like rich family from like yesteryear. And of course she ends up falling in love with like the big I guess the big brother like the main dude or something like that and so each one follows a different brother or sister in this family which I really love this because their family owns this place called the Eloise Inn 
Eloise, which I actually need to go buy that. They have a pre-order right now for this shirt that says the Eloise Inn on the back, and I need to own that because, like, hello, my baby. Adorable. Like, cutest thing ever. But anyway, I do remember... I feel like this has wintry vibes. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. Like, look at the cover, look at the aesthetic. It's winter. Three's winter. Although, you could actually just read the novella, which is Christmas in Quincy, and that for sure is winter vibes, but I have not read this yet. But I'm sure that it's great because I loved this one. So, you know, go for Christmas in Quincy and then go for Indigo Rich. Indigo Rich. The double, double dopper, double doppler. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Double, double feature, double feature. I can't talk. And the last holiday romance I have for you is The Santa Suit by Mary Kay Andrews. I picked this up on a whim because I was seeing it everywhere last year and it was just so cute and so wholesome. I'm pretty sure it's about a girl that like moves to like a new town, doesn't know anybody, trying to escape her old life and she's like setting up in this really old house that like she got for cheap and this handyman that like is like grumpy sunshine that she makes like a happy man again and they fall in love and it's their story. I don't really remember much else from this because like I said it's not a book that's like gonna stick with you but it was a very cute book. I think it's like 200 pages long. It's not, it's very short. It's like quick, easy, just fun. I think a couple smut filled scenes at a time, but it was very cute. And I think it's a good one to read for the holiday season. And last but not least is a book that I honestly am surprised that I loved as much as I did. And that is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. I only read it because it was for a book club for my local book club. And I had been wanting to read it because I also owned that and Once There Were Wolves, but I wasn't sure if I was going to love it because when Books and Lala, Kayla loves something, it's always a shot in the dark whether I'm going to appreciate it or not. Could I tell you what this book is about? No. Uh, I know that it's about a woman that is studying the migrations of a certain flock of birds and like it's also like a story on grief about like why her relationship with her husband didn't work out and like it has flashbacks and all this other stuff. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. I will just say that. I loved my time reading it. It was breathtaking. It was heart-wrenching. There were parts of this that was parts that made me really really upset but I just loved it as a whole. Is it the most interesting book I've ever read? No. You have to really really be invested in the characters for this book to work for you and if so if you're not a character driven girly then like I would not recommend picking this up but like I said if you are like a literary fic girl you want to like I don't know enrich yourself with like a little bit of history and science and stuff check out this book. And so those are my winter book recs for you for this year. Let me know if you've read any of those down in the comments below. If you're still with me, leave a snowflake emoji or a snowman emoji or some type of Christmassy emoji and let me know a winter book that you recommend because I would love to get some new winter book recommendations myself. And I will see you guys for day seven of Bookmas very, very soon. Bye!